You have these two amazing uh, women, Heed the Night and Kristen. <laughs> You have them as these warring women. You know, they're violent towards each other. They're extraordinary. Y you like f these kind of feisty female characters. Always, yeah. Outlaw. Outlaw. Outlaw women. Well, you know, the nice ones who do what they're supposed to do and who make it through life happily and quietly are not terribly interesting to write about. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful company, <laughs> and I would like to be one of those women. But in fact, where your hackles rise and you want to, you know, propose a thesis or propose a question, this is what you need, somebody who is fierce, um, who breaks the law, social laws or other kinds of laws, independent. You say also that fiction needs to have something that opens the door and points the way. Mm -hmm. So what is the something about this book that you're saying? Well, I wanted to restore that powerful human and maybe one of the two things that humans only do, love and language, to an elegant and powerful place. And I wanted it to sort of wander around in the plot when we are having this discussion about, what about those days when black schools were fabulous? They were tough, they were smart, they were good. When people had empires of insurance companies and chains of stores. There were black lawyers, black doctors, whose you know, clientele were, they were serving black people. They were very, very proud. And other people were very, very proud of that ability. Comes the civil rights movement when the press is for assimilation, obviously, and integration. And let's not be separate anymore a perfectly legitimate idea, a just idea. And of course, the fear of those who had made their living on being separate. Those people who used to be called race men because they were mm -hmm. uplifting the race are now called Uncle Toms because they're not revolutionaries. So there was this enormous uh, debate, which is almost never articulated, but it's articulated in this book so clearly between Christine and her mother. Oh yes, they can't they can't stand one another. So Christine is for you know civil rights movement. She oh, talks yeah. about Malcolm X and May's terrified of all that. She's a bit of a caricature, but she is the outer edge of people whom I have known who said, "What is Martin Luther King doing? He's going to ruin everything. All we have built." Then she discovered that her convictions were no longer old-time racial uplift, but separatist, nationalistic, not sweet Booker T, but radical Malcolm X. In confusion, she began to stutter, contradict herself. She forced agreement from the like-minded and quarreled endlessly with those who began to wonder about dancing by the sea while children blew apart in Sunday school, about holding up property laws while neighborhoods fell in flames. As the movement swelled and funerals, marches, and riots was all the news there was, May, prophesying mass executions, cut herself off from normal people. It seems that in your books, you don't judge your characters. You don't make judgments on your characters. Not in the books, no. But is that because you don't see it as your place or because you feel that for African Americans, so much damage has been done in the past that they aren't responsible for being violent or no. being lippy or? <laughs> no, I think my voice, I just want to show the characters off the way they would present themselves. I want to bear witness to them. I want their voices out there, not mine. I have really strong judgments about all sorts of things, right things, wrong things. I mean, half the people I don't want to have to lunch. I mean, you know, but these, this is not about that. It's about their voices, their stories, and their side their side, not mine. 
با 